Once upon a time, in a faraway country full of very mysterious forests, where it was very easy to get lost, there was a magic school, a school full of gorgeous castles and towers. It was not just one castle that went like that. It was a mixture, a collection of castles. And they were so close. They had so many different shapes that it all went together into one crazy mess of magical castles. You stood outside this school and your eyes could not understand what you were seeing. The shapes, the forms, the colours were so strange and beautiful. And of course, this school was magic. So the castles didn't just stay where they were. They moved. One minute, a tower was there. You blinked. And then suddenly it was on its side. Honestly. It was very hard to get a good night's sleep in this magic school because, well, one minute you're lying down and one minute you're on the ceiling. But somehow the students who went there learned to cope with it. You could say this school was quite selective. Now, normally when we say a school is selective, we're talking about the teachers choosing the students very carefully. But actually, it was the school itself that was selective. Because as you know, these buildings were magical. If a student decided, I want to go to the magic school, all they had to do was walk through the front doors to find out if they were worthy. And if they weren't, as soon as they touched the door of the school, bam, they went flying through the air, across the river, over the mountains and all the way home. Now, as you know, this school was a chaotic mess and it was very particular about the students it chose. Therefore, the only people who taught at this school, studied at this school, even the people who worked in the kitchens were crazy, unhinged, unsafe. This was not a place full of people you wanted to be around. It was a horrible, dangerous place. So, of course, one of the top students of the school was none other than storyteller Ariel Goodbody because who else? But this story is not about him. I'm sure you know his stories already. No, this story is about a particular little mouse. A mouse who decided at the young age of three, I'm going to go to the magic school and I'm going to learn to be a snake charmer. And so the mouse picked up his flute, put on his turban, and made the long journey to the school. He came to the door, he knocked, he didn't hear anything, but unfortunately he couldn't reach the handle because he was just a little mouse. So instead he crawled under the door and entered the school and it was all fine. Nobody got kicked out on that day. Now, this mouse was a hard-working student. Every day he woke up, practiced his flute for hours. And fortunately, there were many snakes who went to the school who, for the most part, weren't particularly friendly students. And they especially didn't like it when the mouse start, started playing his flute and tried to get them to dance. So this mouse did not have a lot of friends. And unfortunately, this was an issue. The mouse thought, well, I don't need friends. I just need magic, right? But as the year went on, people started talking more and more about prom. Of course, even a strange magical school that's very selective about its students must have a dance at the end of the year. And this wasn't just any dance. Normally, when schools have dances, 
it can be very embarrassing for the students because if they don't get a date for the dance, if no one asks them to the dance, they feel horrible humiliation and shame and they get laughed at by their peers. But in this school, it was even worse because if you didn't get a date for, for prom, the whole school, the literal actual building, laughed at you. And I don't know if you've ever been inside a building while it laughs, but it's pretty much the same as standing inside a volcano while it erupts. Not particularly fun. So the mouse knew it had to get a date for the prom. And what else could it do? It had to try speed dating. It was the only method it could think of because this mouse was very anxious. And the thought of going up and asking an individual person to go on a date, no, it just simply wasn't going to happen. Unfortunately, the faculty, the staff at the school, put together a speed dating event a few weeks before prom for those students unfortunate enough to not have a date yet. It was basically, let's put all the weird kids in a room together and they can pair up. So the mouse came for his speed dating. He was to sit down on one side of a table and every few minutes, the person opposite him would change and he would meet someone new. Now the mouse maybe wasn't the friendliest. Maybe all he did was spend his time playing the flute and, you know, reading comic books. But he had a decent heart. He was nice enough. So he was sure, you know what? I'm sure I can get on with someone well enough. I'm sure I can go to the prom. It can't be that hard. And so the mouse settled in for the evening. Unfortunately, his first conversational partner was none other than Ariel Goodbody. Oh, hello. I've heard you're playing. You know, um, it was good. It was good until one of the snakes came and bit my leg. So maybe don't play the music next time I'm in the bath and there are snakes around. Now, in this story, Ariel Goodbody was not very nice, apparently. Shame on you, Ariel Goodbody. Well, I'm just doing my best, Ariel Goodbody. I'm improvising a story and you're improvising me and I'm improvising you improvising me. It's, it's a lot. I'm going to need a therapist after this. So that one didn't go so well. Unfortunately, bong, 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 the gong sounded and they moved on. And the next conversation partner that the mouse had was... A little fairy, a little fairy called, mm, does anyone have ideas for names? I've forgotten what I called this. Oh no, I remember the fairy's name. The fairy's name was Oberon. And the mouse said, ah, oh, Oberon, that's the name of the fairy king in that Shakespeare play, isn't it? But you're just a little fairy. You don't look like a fairy king to me. Oh. And Oberon said, well, actually, I am a fairy king. And for saying that, bam! And Oberon cast a powerful spell on the mouse. And the mouse felt this, ooh, this weird tingly sensation. And it felt some kind of wetness in its armpits and under its legs. And then a horrible, horrible smell came out of the mouse. That was right. It wasn't a death spell. It wasn't a spell to get struck by lightning. It wasn't a magic spell to turn him into a frog. It was the worst kind of spell possible. It was the Durian smell curse. Oh, suddenly everyone in the room let out a groan. Oh no, that mouse stank of Durian. And unfortunately, in this school, there were not too many Durian fans. <sighs> so the person running the speed dating covered his nose, or I guess pinched his nose, 
and banged the gong again. Move on! So Oberon moved on, laughing to himself. <laughs> and the next date came up. It was Simba. And uh, the mouse said, now, um, I've read Aesop's fables. I know that generally lions like to eat mice, but allow me to argue why that would be a bad idea. And Simba just said, mm, and tried to eat the mouse. But luckily, the mouse shoved his flute in the way and blocked Simba's mouth with his flute. But oh no, the horrible little lion bit the flute and damaged it. Ugh, oh, horrendous. And then they still had a few minutes left, so they kind of just sat there awkwardly while the lion um, tried to pick bits of flute out of his teeth. I'm really sorry, said Simba. I didn't eat before this. I Look, I know people love to say that lions just have these horrible base instincts and that we go around attacking people, but it's really not true. I know I lunged at you, but I would have stopped before I swallowed. Like I would have spat you out. Like I wouldn't have eaten you. Seriously, I promise. Um. Anyway, do you want to go to prom with me? I mean, you're a bit shorter than me, but bong, bong, bong. And thank God the gong was sounded and the next person was there. And it was an adorable little purple dragon. Called Ale, not Alejandro. Don't call me that. It was Takeshi. And for the first time that evening, the mouse thought, oh, okay, maybe this is someone I can get along with. Yeah, may, maybe this is someone I could spend an evening with without losing my mind. But Takeshi said, oh, you're the one who smells of durian. Uh, Actually, I'm, I'm allergic to durian. <laughs> and when, when, I, when I have an allergic reaction to durian, I get a bit of, I like to breathe fire. And the, the bit, the, the, the dragon sneezed so hard that, he breathed fire all over the mouse and practically burned him to a crisp. Luckily, the, mi the mouse's ears were defended by the turban, but uh, he continued the night particularly more naked than he had begun it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, said Takeshi. It's okay, it's okay, said the mouse. Really, look, I'll, I'll move back and, you know, maybe I'll get that uh, fairy prince to uncurse me. But it's okay, like, it's okay, it happens. No, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Ah! And the dragon flew away. So, so sad he was at the offense he had caused. Now, by this point, the mouse was starting to lose hope. How was he ever going to find a date for prom if this was the selection? And worse than that, even if he found someone, how are they going to spend a whole evening together? Especially now that he stank of durian. But the gong sounded again. Bong, bong, bong. Here we went. And next flew in another dragon. I'm back. What do you mean you're back? I've never met you before. What do you mean you've never met me before? I'm only the most famous dragon on Ariel's YouTube channel. Honestly, the children these days. YouTube channel? We're, we're at a speed dating event in a magical college. I, I don't think YouTube even exists in this universe. Well, it should. Because that's where I perform. Ah, blah, 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 blah. I'm a good performer, aren't I? Ooh, ooh. 
Oh, you want to see some hands dancing? How about this? This is some hands dancing. And I can shake my tail as well. Uh, okay, but um, I don't really see how any of this is relevant to going on a date together. I mean, uh, well, I guess you wouldn't be the worst date. W would we dance together? Together? Oh, hell no. I don't like anyone upstaging me. I will dance by myself and you can watch and you can hold my bag while I dance. Well, I, you know, I guess that's fine because I didn't really want to dance. I just wanted to have a date. But, um, do people like you? No, everyone hates me. Are you kidding? Ugh. I barely even go to this school. Well, I mean, I, mm, there may have been some incident where I got, you know, technically expelled, but uh, that, it's all water under the bridge. Look, the important thing to know is if you spend an evening with me, nobody, nobody is going to try and laugh at you. Not even this school around me. Really? said the mouse. Because, um, you seem kind of weird. I know I'm weird, but I'm also violent. And if someone tries to make fun of you, I'll eat them. Mm. Well, that was a logic even a mouse could not argue with. And so, looking around again at the room, looking at his own scorched fur, he decided it was time to cut his losses. This was probably the best option he was going to get. So he decided to cut his losses and go with Alejandro. All right, said the mouse. We can go on a date together. Um, you've got some, like, cobweb on you, though. Almost like someone kept you in very dirty conditions for a long time and has just pulled you out of a cupboard for a live stream. Well, that would be very unprofessional, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be very unprofessional, said the mouse. And so the dragon flew away and the mouse went to bed, relieved that finally it had found a date. And the, pro the date of the prom came up. And just as Alejandro the dragon had promised, he danced by himself. Oh, yeah. Woo! And the mouse was actually a bit bored, you know? At first, it was nice to just sit, chill, drink a magic potion. And thank God, the first magic potion he drank just happened to be an antidote for the durian curse. So he stopped smelling of durian. Everything was going his way. And then he saw it in the distance, something that they always speak of in legends, something that moves the heart and stirs the soul and gets the body going. It was a karaoke machine, yay! And the mouse may not have been a keen dancer, but you could bet he loved seeing karaoke. And so he passed the night away, singing joyfully as his dragon date did his thing. I'm in the corner watching you kiss her. Whoa. Because he's a mouse, so he squeaks. I'm living a mouse, not the guy you're taking home. I'm just dancing on my own. The end. Whew.